a particle is experiencing a force F whose magnitude is constant and its direction is changing with a constant angular velocity omega. We need to find velocity and distance of the particle. So velocity is a function of time and distance between two successive stops and the mean velocity over this time. So first, let's uh, find the force. So let's assume force is in plus x direction at t is equal to zero. So it's changing direction with constant angular velocity omega. So let's say uh, it turns an angle theta after some time. So this is at t is equal to zero. This is at t is equal to t. So force as a function of time, we can write as f cos theta i cap plus f sin theta j cap. So we have broken this into components. And theta is omega t. So this is our force, which we can write as ma or m dv by dt. So now we can find the velocity as a function of time. So this is our first part, where velocity we can see is varying as a, it's, it's a varying with time. Now speed will be just modulus of this. So if you do that, you will get this. So why we are finding speed? Because in second part, we need to find distance. So distance will be speed into dt, integral of that. Now here is a modulus, but they are asking the distance between two successive stops. So between any two successive stops, the direction of the velocity does not change. So if direction does not change, that means the distance is same as displacement. So we can just remove this mod and integrate it. So at t is equal to zero, the distance is zero. And when does it, okay, sorry, this is the velocity. So yeah, at t is equal to zero, velocity is zero. So again, when does it stop? So that happens when omega t by two is equal to pi. So let's say it stops again at time ts. So omega ts by two is equal to pi. So when we write distance by integrating this dot dt, we'll put the limits from zero to ts and ts will be omega, oh, ts will be given by omega ts by two is equal to pi. So let's write also what we just explained where ts is when its velocity becomes zero again. So during zero to ts, its velocity is positive. So we can integrate one removing the modulized sign because distance is same as the displacement. So we do that. So solving this, we get ts equal to two pi by omega. So we'll put that limit and get the distance. Now the mean velocity over that time, so mean velocity is total distance upon total time. So total time is ts and total distance we already figured out. So if you just divide that, you will get your answer, which is mean velocity.